Hello, welcome. Today uh, we will uh, deal with the last uh, chapter in uh, the series of lectures on hidden Markov uh, model. And the topic of today's uh, lecture is a belief revision or uh, model uh, updating. So far, we have considered to answer different types of uh, questions such as uncovering hidden states, uh, calculating the likelihood probability of observing a sequence of uh, observations and additional uh, uh, questions, assuming that the model parameters we have that is uh, the transition probability, the initial uh, state probabilities and the observation probabilities reflect the reality in that they are uh, dependable or reliable. But once in a while, we have to revise whether this belief we hold uh, reflects the reality. Uh, because the reality we deal with is dynamic and uh, whenever we have fresh uh, evidence uh, in our disposal, uh, we have to see whether this uh, uh, set of evidence reflect or uh, they are in accord with the model uh, parameters. In probabilistic uh, estimation uh, or in uh, probabilistic uh, artificial intelligence, this process, uh, as uh, Professor Julia uh, Pearl uh, at UCLA uh, uh, specifies, is called belief revision. Uh, imagine in hidden Markov model, I have said this many times, and I'll repeat one more time, we always begin with the observations because the observations lead us to the states which are hidden to us. So suppose Alice posted these uh, images on her Instagram account telling us how she arrived from home to office last week. And we are interested in uh, fine tuning or uh, updating our uh, model parameters. And for now, let's assume that we are interested in the transition probability from a state of cloudy to a state of rainy. This transition, given the, the observations we have, uh, could take place at least six times, not at least, uh, at most six times. Transition between Monday and Tuesday could take place uh, from Tuesday to Wednesday and so on up to uh, from Thursday, uh, sorry, from Saturday to Sunday. But we have to begin at some point. And suppose for now we are interested in the transition between uh, Thursday and Friday. So we want to uh, see or we want to know the probability of observing this transition given the observations we have. Since we are here, uh, we have fixed our attention uh, on the transition between uh, Thursday and uh, Friday. Uh, altogether, we have nine, we have the possibility of observing or experiencing nine different transitions. These transitions, remember, they are hidden to us. So we have every reason to believe that any of these transitions could happen. A transition from not only from cloud to rain, cloud to cloud, or cloud to sun, 
but from sun to sun, sun to cloud, sun to rain, or rain to rain, rain to cloud, and rain to sun. So out of these nine possible observations, we are interested only in one of the transitions. But since we have to take into account all the, the, the observations we have, now other than the transition that takes place from, uh, from uh, cloudy to rainy between Thursday and Friday, we have to take all the possible combinations on other days to account for the observations we have. So now, given that our interest is a transition from A, uh, uh, from C to R, we want to calculate the probability of observing this setup or this configuration. Remember, this configuration accounts for all the observations we have and the probability of experiencing a transition from a state of cloudy to a state of rainy. Fortunately, we have now in place some expressions we have already defined uh, previously, which we can take advantage of to address this concept. So we have, for example, okay, we describe this configuration or this setup as Xi of t. Xi of t simply means the probability of observing the state i at time t and transiting to a state j at time t plus one, given the observation and the model. Of course, we have to begin with the model because as we assume that these observations are made in Oxford and they are representative of the weather in Oxford. So now, in order to account for this configuration or in order to calculate the probability of this configuration, we can take advantage of the alpha function. Remember, the alpha function accounts for all the observation made up to time t and the state being c or cloudy at time t. So this accounts for all the observation up to this point, up to, up to Thursday. Likewise, if we take beta t plus one, it accounts for all the images made after t plus one. Remember? Uh, beta t plus one of r is the probability of observing all the observation after t plus one, given that at time t plus one, we are in state r. So beta accounts for the last two, alpha accounts for the last uh, four. If we multiply these two, they will account this image and this image, but note the observation made on Friday. So that means we have to take into account this observation because beta hasn't taken, a, to, uh, taken in, it into account. And we have to also take into account the transition made between uh, Friday and uh, between th uh, Thursday and Friday. So if we now include this, now they account for this setup. This setup, remember, is only for this transition. On, on between Thursday and Friday, we have said that nine transitions would take place. And we are 100% sure that either one of these transition, transitions has taken place. So if we add the Cijs for all i and j's between Thursday and Friday, 
it should yield a probability of one. So the Xi of J for this particular time can now be calculated as follows. So Xi of J is given as alpha T of I times beta T plus one of J in the transition Aij and then the observation O T plus one in state j and we normalize it by the probability of observation given lambda in order to uh, make sure that when we add xi and j the result is one so this is how we define xi and j now look Previously, in order to make a transition from, from, from this state to this state, we have to be first in this state. We cannot make a transition to rain, uh, from cloud to rain, unless we are in the state of cloudy. And last time, using the gamma function, we have expressed the probability of being in the state of cloudy at time t given the observations. We have this already, we have defined this one. Now, using the xi and j at time t, we can also express gamma t of j because this tells us that we were in state i and transited to state j. So if from state I, we can transit to any of the possible states, we can calculate the probability of being in state I. Why is gamma T of C interesting? Gamma C of T, remember, is given the observation, the probability of being in the state C at time T. Now we could be, if we consider gamma T of C for this, gamma t of c for this and add all of them, it gives us a probability of being in the state of cloudy. And this is nothing but our initial probability, pi c. So by adding all the, the gammas from time t1 up to capital T minus one, we have the initial probability for cloud by it, it, likewise, we can also calculate for R and for S. So this gives us an update to the initial probability. Likewise, now we calculated the, the, the for this configuration, remember? The transition from state of uh, a, a cloudy state to rainy state at time t, but we could have observed this transition at all times with different probabilities. Now, if we add all of them and then normalize them with gamma t of i, because we have said that in order to make a transition from here to here, first we have to be in this state. So this is why we normalize it. What we get is a transition from state I to J. So now we can revise our belief about the transition AIJ just by taking the observations into account. Now we have updated our belief about pi. We have updated our belief about capital A. Now what's left is updating our belief about the observation. So for example, we want to update our belief about observing cycling in the state of S. So what we do is we label all those observations pertaining to cycling. So we have observed cycling on the first day, third day, fourth and fifth days. And then we see the probability of observing 
the same state here is defined by the gamma. For example, this is gamma 1s, gamma 3s, gamma 4s, and gamma 5s. So these are the states in which we have observed cycling. But remember, the states are hidden from us. That means we have to assume that the same state could be experienced any time with different probabilities. So if we take these states, one, two, three, four, and divided by the probability of all the, uh, the, the, the probability of observing the same state in, in all the times, we have now the probability of observing cycling in the same state. Likewise, if we want to calculate, for example, B, C of Y, that means the probability of Ali cycling when it was cloudy, we can identify the cloudy state here, one, three, four, and five, calculate the gammas for them, add the gammas for them, and divide it by the summation of the gammas for, for, for uh, C for all the observations. By so doing, we can calculate the observation probabilities for all states. So this makes our updating of the parameters in hidden Markov model complete. And by this, we come to the conclusion of our lecture. I hope you will revise hidden Markov model uh, more often until you have a solid grasp. And then you can begin applying hidden Markov models to solve different problems. By this, I come to the conclusion and say goodbye.